Hello everybody, welcome to the Coffee Run Live episode, a lot, 433 maybe I think. Wanted to come to you live from my lounge room this morning. I felt like a change of place, change of scenery was required today. I've been out with the ever fabulous Jeremy and Kim of The Mind Master Fame. So just try to get comfortable. Um, been out with them this morning doing our coffee coaching and I brought one home. So yes, really, really interesting actually on that. So I popped a photo up. Um, I think yesterday I'm trying this new, trying out this new eating plan, this new way of eating. And I am, it's like a whole vegan plan. I'm not vegan, but I'm, you know, I, I'm the kind of person that if I'm going to do something, I'm like all in, right? And it's a, it's a, um, like a, a physical boot camp thing for the next eight weeks. And she's provided this eating plan to go along with it. So I'm like, okay, you know, if I get told, when I'm told what to do, I will do what I'm told. I will follow it to the T and things like that. So on that, there's been no coffee. Now I typically drink bulletproof coffee in, in the, the, like a bulletproof style of coffee. So I make my coffee with butter, um, and coffee and oil and, and stuff like that. So like really high quality fats and, and things like that to, to fuel my body. But because this eating plan is vegan and butter is not vegan, um, yesterday <laughs> I, had, I had no coffee. So I've, I've had this massive headache like all through here and all kind of like down the side of my neck and, and things like that. Oh my God, yesterday it was ridiculous. Um, to the point where I know I did the coffee run yesterday and I got off there and I'm like, I don't even know, like my head was so sore, I don't even know if I made sense. It was really kind of disconcerting actually. So this morning, sitting with Jeremy and Kim, and I'm like, all right, I, I, it might throw out my, um, you know, calories or macros or whatever. I don't really understand that. I know I might sound like I know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm fuck it. I'm having the almond latte, and I've got to tell you, just notice that one of my chairs is broken. I've got to tell you, my headache is gone. And that tells me that it was an actual coffee withdrawal, caffeine withdrawal headache, which is not much fun. I am not fun to be around when I have caffeine withdrawal headaches. So now that we've got that out of the way, although it's, it's so I had um, it's scrambled tofu. Oh my God, it's really yummy. And I had this other thing, um, tempeh for teriyaki tempeh for lunch yesterday. Really tasty, really, really yummy. Um, so we'll see what happens. Let's see if I can go the eight weeks. It's going to be really, really interesting. So that's not really what I wanted to talk to you about today. What I did want to talk with you about today is this whole concept of, of money. Now, what I find really fascinating about money is that it's a really great mirror for so many things in, in our lives and in our worlds. But what happens when we're, for me, you know, and what I've noticed and what I've learned about is that when we kind of, we coast along and we'll kind of hit this sort of like an upper limit, right? Of, of, of the amount of money that comes into our households, into our, into our businesses, into our business bank accounts, that type of thing. You might hit a, an, like a particular number of sales or a particular amount of money that hits in. And then it can be really hard to kind of bust through this money ceiling. So something I learned years ago, actually, through a, a Money Archetypes training, which was through with Kendall Summerhawk, really, really great lens at, at looking at, um, you know, your behaviors and, and another lens to look at, at human behaviors through, actually. But what was really interesting to me is that if you go back and if you have a look at your, your average monthly income, like so money coming into your business, not number of sales, but the actual revenue that you've brought into your business. If you go and have a look at what that average is each month over the next 12 months, over the last 12 months, sorry, that's your money speedo. So what, you're, what you'll notice is that you are unconsciously conditioned, uh, you, you kind of get used to operating and, and bringing in the same amounts of money all the time. And 
we will do things as these amazing humans that we are, we will do things to make sure that we're staying safe and that we're staying comfortable, right? Even if consciously we're like, I'm gonna bust through, I'm gonna hit 10 grand this month, I'm gonna hit 20 grand this month, I'm gonna hit 50 grand this month, I'm gonna hit 100 grand this month, whatever your number is, you could be really consciously driven at that. But if your unconscious mind is like, but when I hit $50,000, I'm a greedy bitch. But when I hit $50,000, I don't have any time left. Or when I hit $50,000, I have to sacrifice all of this time with my family. When I hit $50,000, I'm going to have to be working 12 hours a day, seven days a week and being available and you know doing all of these things for all of these people and I don't want to be. So if you were to think about what your, actually go back and have a look at what your money speedo is. So you can see what you are unconsciously programmed to be bringing in. Now, I know for me that my, my kind of like, um, where things are going really, really kind of like really well, and I've got heaps of time on my hands is when I'm sitting at around 50K a month, right? So five, 600 grand a year. It's, you know, that to me is kind of like, it's just really sort of easy, you know? I mean, it's like you've got people coming in and, and you're doing your stuff and it's fun and it's easy and I'm not, I don't have these massive time demands. And I know that for, for me, when I push up and over that and, and my previous experience has been that when I get to 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100 a month, that for me is where I kind of hit the, the, the speed wobbles, right? And I feel like I have to sacrifice a whole lot of things in order to be able to hit that. So what I've had to work on over, over the years has been repatterning and changing that and actually going, all right, well, is this, is this real? Do I have to sacrifice all of this? Because at the end of the day, what we, what we know is that there's different things that we believe to be true about hitting certain money levels, right? So, you know, what, what's yours? Like, what, what beliefs do you have is something that you want to do some inquiry around? Uh, do you think that it's, um, you know, some people will think that it's, it, you know, I don't need that much money, I'm being greedy. Uh, or uh, all, all rich people are assholes. Or, you know, you, your experience might be that everyone that you know of who's doing like copious amounts of money is is a narcissistic bitch. <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe you, you feel like you're going to have to be available and sacrifice yourself and give every molecule of your being over to your clients if you're making that much money. Or maybe you think, fuck that, I don't want to pay that much money out in tax or screw that. You know, it's not, I'm not going to have enough money left over at the end of the day anyway, so why the fuck am I even bothering? You know, we've all got these, these things rattling around in our heads. And, and let me know if this is resonating with you because I, I've, I've seen this play out over and over again, not only with myself, but also with my clients, where you, you can kind of like have these, this really fast period of growth and you can hit some new levels. But if you're not adjusting your mindset as well to keep up with those new levels and repatterning your beliefs, you end up like cycling back down again to where you feel safe and where you feel comfortable, right? Even if you consciously are like, I, I can't even exist on $5,000 a month or I can't even exist on $10,000 a month or whatever your number is, whatever your break-even number is. And so we've got to repattern your beliefs, your thinking around where it is that you are wanting to be and where it is that you're wanting to grow. And also having a look at some really great prompts are, is there any reason why I don't deserve, insert the number that you want to be receiving, right? The, 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 whether, like money in. So I'm not talking net profit. I'm not talking gross profit. I'm just talking like revenue. So your money in, is there any reason why you don't deserve to make $10,000 a month, $50,000 a month, $100,000 a month? because that'll give you some little insights and push that number up if you're like, no, I freaking deserve that. You know, no, I'm like damn straight on that. Okay, cool, so what about at 110 a month? What about 150 a month? You know, or, or a year if, if it works better in your brain to do it annually. So have a look at that. The next thing that I think is really, really important is getting, being aware of what you're going to actually use that money for. 
right? So think about your money goal, which, you know, let's say $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month, $50,000 a month, whatever number it is, let's say it's 50 grand. So if your goal is $50,000 a month, of that 50 grand a month, what do you, how is that going to get split between your different money buckets? So for me, the when I every time I receive a deposit into my business bank account, so in the form of a sale, I, I put half of that goes over, and, and I do this every day, half of that money goes over into my tax bucket account, right? Because I've been really shit at managing my tax in the past. It's just really, I'm, I just, I'm like, oh, I like spending money on the internet uh, or in person if we happen to be in person. So I've got to be really disciplined around money going into a particular account. So 50% of every dollar I make goes over into my tax account. I also have ten, my GST, so 10% of every every dollar that comes in, 10% goes over into another account. So 60% of my money goes away somewhere else. Um, so there, there's two money buckets that go there. And then the rest is either over to me, it's to business expenses, it's to marketing, it's to all of those other things. Hey, Christy, happy Tuesday. So that's how I do that. So I think it's really important that you've got money buckets because here's the thing that happens. When you have got money going somewhere and you've got like your, your normal account that you run your stuff through, if you've got money going out of there, and, and I believe money is like an energy, right? It's like, it's like the waves of the ocean or like the tides. You know, the tide comes in and you've got money coming in, the tide goes out, you've got money going out in the form of bills. Hey, Jill, great to see you, superstar. Uh, you've got money going out, it goes to bills or tax or, you know, whatever it happens to go to, expenses, and then the tide comes in, you make more money and you make some sales and then the tide goes out and so on and so forth. But there's always that flow. So what we're aiming to do is when you've got money going over into these other accounts is that they're growing and then now some will come out and then they're always in that upward motion, that upward trend. Hey, Linda, good morning. So that's something to bear in mind. Now, what happens when you have got a um, when you've got an account that, like, I, I call it like my uh, my my I guess like trading account. That's not what I call it. I call it just like my business account, my general ins and outs account. I generally run that pretty lean. So that's I have all of the money going out into all of the places, right? And the reason that I do that is. The, you know, that nature abhors a vacuum, right? So if I've got, if my money speedometer, my money speedo is set that I really like to have, and this is a personal thing, I really like to have, a you know, $5,000 kept in my business, my like my trading account, right? So for the ins and outs that kind of come in. So that for, uh, that's for different expenses, different subscriptions that I've got because, you know, it costs money to run a business. You know, so that that $5,000 sort of like sits in there and it, and, it, and it goes lower and it goes up. But when I go and pay bills out and it goes down, money seems to just automatically kind of come back in and it comes back up to where that speedo is. So if you re decide that, right, my money speedo for, my, for your business account is 10 grand, right? So you always want to have roughly $10,000 in there, plus or minus, maybe a couple of grand. So that any time that anything comes in, you've got the money in there to just pay it and then it goes out and then you'll, it comes back in and then it goes out. If you deplete that, then you will find that money comes back in. A great metaphor for this is, and, and to, to put it into a bit of perspective, hands up those of you who have ever gone and cleaned out your wardrobe. Me. So don't leave me hanging. Make sure you let me know, please, by typing a yes or a me or a, a like, I do this all the time or like, whatever, let me know. It's not just me that cleans out my wardrobe. So typically what I'll do maybe once or twice a year is I'll go and do a wardrobe cull right? I'll go, yeah, that's, I don't feel good in that. I don't like that. That's so last year. Or this rocks animal print doesn't ever leave like that. That stays in my wardrobe all the time. And I'll be like, you know, that, that's got to come out. And so at different times, my wardrobe can look really kind of empty. But then it's like a few months later, I'll go into my wardrobe and again, like it's overflowing again. I'm like, how the fuck did that even happen? 
So our, like we, we fill up the spaces. If you notice that your coat hangers are sitting in there and you go and take all of them out and then there's, there's um, like heaps of empty coat hangers, you'll go and then a few months later, you'll find that all of those coat hangers are hanging clothes again. Like it's, it's full again, yeah? Not just me, thank you, Rebecca. I'm glad it's not just me. Whew. And I'm glad you guys can hear me because I was getting a little bit worried there for a second. So like all of your coat hangers all of a sudden have got clothes hanging back on them again and then it's time to do another freaking wardrobe cull. I find this in my cosmetic bag. Like it's just like things, and I know that I buy stuff, right? But it's just like things just kind of like fill back up again. Your money buckets will do the same, right? So you, you want to treat them, like, like when we try and hang on to things really, really tightly, if we try and hold on to our money, what happens is it's like we, it's, it's, it's communicating to God, the universe, whatever energy you want to, whatever you want to think about, but it's like a scarcity energy, right? It's like, oh, I can't pay that yet because what if I don't make any more money? Oh, I can't go buy that yet because what if I don't make any more money? Or I can't go and pay that bill because what if there's no more money? You know, if you get into that mindset of, of treating money and thinking about it like a flow, ins and outs, ebbs and flows, cash flow is called cash flow for a reason, have these different money buckets set up, right? Because that way when it gets put over there, to me, even though it's, I've still got that money sitting there, it, it has that business, that trading account operating pretty lean so that it's kind of like, come on universe, like fill up that bucket, please fill up that bucket. And it does every time, every single time. It's really freaking weird the way that it works. This is why people uh, typically end up staying like oscillating at the same revenue, right? So you've got to know what it is. You've got to have a look at how you're going to spend that money. Pre-spend it in your head Put it into different accounts so that it's not all just sitting there. Because if it's all sitting there, it's clogging up the flow, right? So allow your money to go elsewhere. I also really like it to be gone elsewhere. Otherwise, I like to spend it. So I just don't need that temptation of having that money sitting there. I don't, I don't need a tax bill. I just want when the tax bill comes, I just want to go pay that thing. Uh, I don't want to have to be in the place of um, feeling stressed and overwhelmed about it which and, and sick about it, actually, which I've been like that in the past. So that is not, not a good place to be in. So money buckets, ins and outs, ebbs and flows, making sure that you've got things going in in all the different places. But I very strongly encourage you to go and have a look at what is your, what's your money speedo? Where are you, where are you pre-programmed? How much are you pre-programmed to make, right? And if you've never done this, what's really curious is that it typically is programmed at probably what your parents were making on average, like by today's standards, or uh, what you think is reasonable, what you perhaps think is fair, uh, perhaps what you think is you know not greedy and, and things like that. So go and do that. I, it was really helpful for me to see what mine was, I did, this, um, I did this certification going back, I think, 2013. Uh, so it was really, really interesting for me to see that um, and, and my behaviours around, around money and then refining that because if you can ratchet up your speedo by increasing and knowing where it is that your money is going and then acting as if all of that money is coming in, then you'll actually make more money. It's really kind of cool. So that is that for you today. I trust that that is helpful. We have got Funnelicious open where you will be learning everything that you need about bringing in these clients, which is going to help with your cash flow, but in an automated way, right? So we're looking at ads, we're looking at funnels, we're looking at how to really optimize and, and build and grow and nurture the relationships with people who are following, following you on the internet and making sure that they can, you know, constantly get to know you. And then if it's appropriate, when you go and offer something, they'll go, oh my God, shut up and take my money. I am so in. So it'll help you with making money on the internet. It will help you setting up all of those things so that you're not constantly feeling like you're scrambling and like you have to be on there all the time. So finally, it's just the link is in the uh, description of this video today. It is nicolajmaras.com forward slash funalicious. So on that note, I am going to love you and leave you. If you've got any questions about this or anything else, please let me know. If there's something that you'd like me to cover on the coffee run for you, let me know. 
I am gonna go and finish my coffee before I've gotta get some lunch. I've never eaten so much food in my whole life. It's really, really, really interesting, um, the amount of food that I'm eating on this new eating plan. Really curious, and I can't wait for all the muscles to come. So keep your fingers crossed for me, because <laughs> I'm like, bring on the muscles. All right, you guys, I have a really amazing day. I don't think I need any more coffee. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. If you've got any questions about this or anything else, let me know. I'd love to answer them for you in the coffee round or via Messenger or, or anywhere else that you happen to be finding me. Otherwise, get out there, go help some people, have a whole fun and ton doing it. And remember, the world is ready for your brand of awesomeness. I will see you very, very soon.